Hi, I'm Susan Evans from SusanEvans.org and today we're starting a brand new series on chemistry, elementary chemistry for younger kids. Now if you're doing uh, chemistry with high school students, this is not for them. I am doing high school chemistry with my older two boys and we are recording all of our experiments for the unit study treasure vault which you can find at SusanEvans.org. For my two younger kids, for elementary, I am using Christian Kids Explore Chemistry by Bright Ideas Press. And so you're going to be seeing a series of videos and blog posts about this book. Um, one thing that you will enjoy about this book is it makes chemistry accessible. Don't freak out if you failed your chemistry in high school because this will explain it in simple terminology, but also use the nice rich vocabulary words that will help them understand uh, chemistry concepts. And then also, there are quizzes um, at the end of each unit that are super, super funny. Uh, one of the uh, three uh, letters, there's an A, B, C, there's different um, multiple choice, and always there's one that is super hilarious, so your kids will enjoy uh, this chemistry course, not just from the experiments that you're going to do with us, but also from the uh, quizzes and tests that they have uh, from the book. So um, this first one is an introduction to a chemistry tool. So take a look at some of the tools that we use to study chemistry. Here are some of the chemistry tools you might encounter when you are studying chemistry. Uh, first of all, we have the Erlenmeyer flasks. These flasks are so fun. They are used to collect, hold, and mix chemicals, and if you get strong ones, you can actually put them on Bunsen burners and heat up liquids. Um, these are super, super cool to have when you have um, uh, dry ice on the bottom and a tiny bit of water. Then and it comes up out of there and then spills out the, um, the gas of it, uh, falls, and it looks like you are a mad scientist. So the Erlenmeyer flasks are super fun to have and they measure, you can measure the liquids on the side of each of the Erlenmeyer flasks. The second thing we have is test tubes. So these test tubes are used for a lot of different experiments. They are glass cylinders with an opening at the top, and these hold and mix small amounts of chemicals, and you can put them in a rack. Now, one way to make a rack is to have a block of wood and to drill large holes into it, and then you can place them into a rack like that. The next thing we have is beakers over here. These beakers are um, measuring devices that are similar to drinking glasses. Uh, they can be heated also, uh, and they allow you to be able to measure different liquids, uh, and they also have a spout for pouring, if you can see the spout on each of those beakers. Okay, our next um, item is the funnel. Funnels are necessary in our um, uh, chemistry experiments in order to be able to pour uh, something uh, into another substance uh, that has a small opening at the top, okay? Now we have graduated cylinders. This graduated cylinder right here is a, a long, thin uh, cylinder, and it's uh, similar to a measuring cup. It's more accurate on the sides. You have the different um, slashes to find out how much liquid you have in it. And so um, this is used also for measuring liquids. Okay, now we have uh, pipettes. These little pipettes are used for uh, getting a drop of something and putting a drop someplace else. So small amounts of liquids can be uh, grabbed through those pipettes. And uh, we do have a burner. It's not a Bunsen burner, but it is a burner. And that is used for heating up different things in chemistry. And then we also have a scale. If you take a look at that scale, 
You can measure the how, how much something weighs, uh, maybe before and after an experiment to see how much maybe evaporates or whatever. And so a scale can also be useful for chemistry experiments. And last but not least, here is the thermometer. So you can measure the heat of any particular solution. So here we have all of our chemistry tools. You will not need any of those um, chemistry tools uh, for this particular book. You can use whatever is in your kitchen. But this is an introduction to find out what chemistry tools are used by people doing chemistry experiments. Now we are going to use some of these chemistry tools to show how to do measurements in chemistry. We are measuring the orange juice, and if you look into the container, you can put it into a beaker or a graduated cylinder, we see that it is 75 milliliters, okay? Because it's between the 50 and the 100, exactly. So that's 75, we don't even need to interpolate or estimate that. Now we are pouring from that beaker, into a graduated cylinder. And if you're doing this at home and you don't have these, you can just use a glass um, measuring device. Okay, so now you're gonna have to interpolate that because I don't think on that graduated cylinder it goes up that high. So based... For a 42, that is a 52. Okay. Can you turn it around so we could see the camera can see 40, the numbers? 40. Okay, so let's look at the top of there. You see how the 40, now where would the 60 be? It looks like it might be on the... It's exactly a, a, the same amount as the 40. Okay, so yeah. 60, okay, and then a little bit more, so 70, okay. five. Okay, so it started at 75, so we're thinking, hmm, it, I don't know, it looks a little bit less than 75. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's, less. Um, let's pour it back in, carefully pour it back into the other container. So what we're doing is pouring it back and forth three times into containers that have uh, measuring. Now, um, I want you to set them both down, and I'm looking and it looks like it is a tiny bit less. Now, why would it be a tiny bit less from pouring it from one to the other? Maybe because there's still some in this. Okay, there's still a little bit in there. So if you, if you look at it really closely, you could probably see little droplets along the sides or maybe along the bottom. And so sometimes when we measure things out um, and we try to be precise, it's not exactly precise. And so we have to interpolate or estimate. So this is an experiment about measurements. You will also need safety glasses, which look like goggles like this, and that's to protect your eyes from um, getting stinging stuff in your, into your eyes. You could actually go blind with some of the things that get thrown up into your eyes. So make sure that you wear um, safety goggles. Uh, safety glasses, excuse me, and also you will want a lab coat. You, in a pinch, you could get that uh, either at Goodwill from, um, you know, th these ones we got at Goodwill, or you can also get a shirt, like a white shirt uh, to use as a lab coat. You could also have a smock, especially, especially if you have younger children with you. So these are some of the uh, chemistry tools that we are going to be using for chemistry. I'm Susan Evans from SusanEvans.org. Thanks for watching our chemistry tool video.